Good afternoon. So today I am just going to show you how to do a brief and brisk abdominal examination for PACES exam. So you will get an abdomen in the station 4 as a short case for 10 minutes. You get about 6 minutes and 4 minutes for the examiner. So you should know how to do a brisk examination of the abdomen in a systematic way. So you know a limited number of organ abnormalities only in the abdomen you can get. Either it could be a hepatomegaly or a splenomegaly or a hepatosplenomegaly or a renal swelling or a renal transplant or ascites and chronic liver disease. These are the five or six abnormalities which will keep in the abdominal station. So when you get the abdominal station, you are not supposed to take any history with the clinical examination. So first you just uh, observe the patient top to bottom for a few seconds for looking for any gross abnormality. There, is there any scleral ictus? Any swelling on either side of the neck? Is there any evident gynecomasia? Is there any abnormalities in the abdomen? Is there any scar over the anterior abdominal wall? The umbilicus seems to be medial mid position and the flanks full or not. And then I will just see the either uh, so just for the pitting edema of the lower leg. And then come nearer to the patient. Take the hand, look for the uh, colonicia, leukonicia, clubbing, palmar erythema, repentance contracture. Then ask him to stretch out his arm for the flap. And then on the same position, I will look for any fistula, functioning fistula on either side. Okay, and then come to the eyes, ask him to look down, look down for the scleral interest, then the conjunctival pallor or uh, 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 suffusion. Open your mouth, uh, put out your tongue. Okay, then I will see on either side for the parotid gland and then for the lymph nodes on either side, supraclavicularfosa, then come and look for the uh, gynecomasia. And then I will start palpating the abdomen. A soft palpation must be initially done. I'm just going to touch your tummy. If there is any pain, you please tell me, okay? So just do a soft palpation and see whether there is a gross organomegaly on uh, any part of the, any quadrant of the abdomen. And then start looking for the liver. You start from the right iliac fossa. Turn your head to the other side. Breathe in and out. Relax and breathe in and out. Yes, yes. So look for the lower edge of the liver or any hepatomegaly. So at the same time, you can see underneath your finger any, any other swelling you are feeling. So you come and suppose if you feel the liver, okay, so suppose if I feel the edge of the liver, then you, I will come up and percuss, do the tidal percussion. Okay, so dull, if, here it is dull. T take a deep breath in, hold it for a second. Okay, this is resonant. Breathe out, okay, again dull. So I will come down again and I will demonstrate that the tidal percussion is continuous with the, the percussion not on the liver. So that makes sure that it is a hepatomegaly. And now I will look for the spleen. I will start from the right iliac fossa, but I will keep my hand push, pressing the lower left to lower chest inwards so that the spleen can be felt and then ask him to breathe in and out. Okay, just look for the spleen. Okay, if you are in doubt, you can have and take him E side lot on thinning. Okay. Okay. Breathe in and out. Okay. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Okay. Okay. Then if I am in doubt, I will again focus over the trop space for the obliteration of the new usual resonance. Now I will see for any bimanually palpable swelling in the lumbar region on either side. Okay. And now I will percuss, come down, come down, and then look for the dullness in the flank. If it is dull, I will ask him to turn to that side, wait for a few seconds, and then see whether the shifting dullness. Okay. Then at the final end, on the chumache, just cough, cough. <coughs> okay, just herniol orifices. Now, if I could get a swelling in the right upper quadrant, it could be a hepatomegaly. So uh, I will do the tidal percussion and then demonstrate that uh, how, how, the, how, how uh, big the hepatomegaly. And if the spleen, the reason why I say there is a swelling in the left upper quadrant, it is spleen because I could not get above the swelling. It is dull on percussion and uh, the growth, the, the, spleen, the, the direction of the growth is towards the right side. Sometimes it can even cross the midline. If I feel 
a mass in the lumbar region, it could be a renal swelling. So here I can get above the swelling, it will be resonant on percussion and it will never cross the midline. And if I feel, a, if I see a scar in the right iliac fossa, I will make sure always that below the scar, is there any swelling, is there some, which is a transplanted kidney. And in the presence of an AV fistula should not misguide you uh, to renal swelling, if, if the, even if the patient has a hepatosplenia megaly, because an end stage renal disease patient with a functioning fistula can have hepatosplenia megaly without a renal megaly for other reasons, for example, diabetic uh, nephropathy or Ig nephropathy or something of that sort. He can have hepatosplenia megaly due to other reasons. So when there is a fistula, you should not be misguided if there is hepatosplenia and diagnosed as a uh, renomegaly. Okay, finally, you have to do the auscultation over the swelling for any brewery over the atrial area. Okay. So that's all. There is a, it's a brief station actually. You can finish the examination maybe within three minutes and then you can sum up and confirm the organomegaly which you have got is either liver or spleen or hepatosplenia megaly or renomegaly or a transplanted kidney or is the ascites and chronic liver disease. That's all, okay?